The Weather Experts, only on ABC 13. Tonight on Nightline, round two. Barack Obama and John McCain clash over an economy in crisis. We're live in Nashville at the end of a critical debate on the road to the White House. Gloves off. John McCain gets tough and Barack Obama hits back. But who came out on top? And game changer? Did McCain do enough to put a stop to Obama's surging campaign? George Stephanopoulos is back to tell us who won and who lost in the Nightline Report Card. From the global resources of ABC News, with Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, and Terry Moran at the presidential debate in Nashville, Tennessee, this is Nightline, October 7, 2008. Good evening, everyone. I'm Terry Moran, and the second presidential debate in this campaign is now history. And you know, for all the sound and fury out there on the campaign trail these days, this this was a pretty subdued affair. There were not a lot of fireworks here tonight. The candidates played it safe, and that meant no real exchanges, no real depth, and a lot of talking points. The town hall format here, it seemed to have both Barack Obama and John McCain on their best behavior. But there was a lot on the line here nevertheless, especially for John McCain. Polls show Obama steadily surging nationwide and in many of the crucial battleground states. And so for McCain, the big question here was, could he turn it around? Senator Barack Obama of Illinois and Senator John McCain of Arizona. Gentlemen. For this debate, a different format. The candidates in the arena set amidst 80 voters. They and online questioners would do the grilling. The economy dominated from the outset, and Obama laid the blame for the problems directly on Republicans and John McCain. And I believe this is a final verdict on the failed economic policies of the last eight years, strongly promoted by uh, President Bush uh, and supported by Senator McCain, that essentially said that we should strip away regulations, consumer protections, let the market run wild, and prosperity would rain down on all of us. Uh, it hasn't worked out that way. And so now we've got to take some decisive action. Going in, the town hall format was supposed to be McCain's turf. His candidacy was built on these events, and he came in needing a win. Polls showing voters moving away from him on the economy. So he walked right up to the first questioner, as if trying to prove he's got the solutions, and McCain made a remarkable new promise. And I think that this problem has become so severe, as you know, that we're going to have to do something about home values. As President of the United States, Alan, I would order the Secretary of the Treasury to immediately buy up the bad home loan mortgages in America and renegotiate at the new value of those homes, at the diminished value of those homes, and let people make those, be able to make those payments and stay in their homes. Is it expensive? Yes. But we all know, my friends, until we stabilize home values in America, we're never going to start turning around and creating jobs. A few times, McCain tried humor. It didn't really work. The powers of the Treasury Secretary have been greatly expanded. The most powerful officer in the cabinet now, Hank Paulson, says he won't stay on. Who do you have in mind to appoint to that very important post? Senator McCain? Not you, Tom. <laughs> no, <please. laughs> The two men spent much of the debate on their feet, stalking around the stage, shadowing each other like two prize fighters, their weapons, their words. And McCain came in with a clear strategy, hit Obama, and hit him hard as a big spending liberal. Senator Obama has never taken on his the leaders of his party on a single issue. This is the most liberal big spending record in the United States Senate. Obama fired back, painting McCain's policies as Bush redux, trickle-down economics favoring the wealthy. When Senator McCain is proposing tax cuts that would give the average Fortune 500 CEO an additional $700,000 in tax cuts, that's not sharing a burden. But McCain pressed on, saying Obama's tax plans would harm the economy. Small businesses Amer across America We'll, we'll have to cut jobs and we'll have their taxes increase and won't be able to hire because of Senator Obama's tax policies. You know, he said some time ago, he said he would forgo his tax increases if the economy was bad. I got some news, Senator Obama. The news is bad. 
on energy. Obama said McCain's long tenure in Washington means he is part of the problem. Senator McCain and I actually agree on something. He said a while back that the big problem with energy is that for 30 years, politicians in Washington haven't done anything. What Senator McCain doesn't mention is he's been there 26 of them. Obama was low-key in this debate, even a bit professorial up there. He explained things a lot. McCain seemed crisper, perhaps indeed more at ease in this format, hitting his points. He connected, focusing on the bottom line of his attacks, his proposals. If you're a parent and you're struggling to get health insurance for your children, Senator Obama will find you. I want to give every American a $5,000 refundable tax credit. They can take anywhere across state lines. Why not? Don't we go across state lines when we purchase other things in America? On foreign policy, a sharp exchange on Iraq. He does not understand our national security challenges. We don't have time for on-the-job training, my friend. I don't understand how we ended up invading a country that had nothing to do with 9-11 while Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda are setting up base camps and safe havens to train terrorists to attack us. That was Senator McCain's judgment, and it was the wrong judgment. And then it seemed Obama finally got a little mad and scored when McCain quoted Theodore Roosevelt. But talk softly, but carry a big stick. Now, Senator McCain suggests that somehow, you know, I'm green behind the ears, and, you know, I'm just spouting off, and... He's somber and responsible. I, Thank Senator, you very Sen much. Sen <laughs> Senator McCain, this is the guy who sang Bomb, Bomb, Bomb Iran, who called for the annihilation of North Korea. That, I don't think, is an example of speaking softly. This is the person who, after we, had, we hadn't even finished Afghanistan, where he said, next up, Baghdad. Throughout that this event, reading the body the language, States McCain Senate. got closer well, we to the audience. At one point near the end, walking you. right up to shake nice hands with a Navy you. veteran. Thanks for serving. And Obama, well, he hung back, explaining his famous cool might have been a handicap line here. Line but he rallied at the end, driving sure home his message of change. And the question in this election is, are we going to pass on that same American dream to the next generation? Over the last eight years, we've seen that dream diminish. We need fundamental change. That's what's at stake in this election. That's the reason I decided to run for president. And at the end, a handshake between the candidates and, and a light moment for debates. the moderator. And you're in my way of my script there, if you will move. <laughs> Well, Tom Brokaw might not have been able to see his script, but the candidates sure stuck to theirs. They had theirs memorized. Nevertheless, there were millions of people across the country who got a good long look at both of them. So, when we come back, who won this thing? The grades are in. George Stephanopoulos is here to tell us the results in the Nightline report card. Stay with us. March 10th, my nine-year-old son, Walter, disappeared. And a five-month investigation led to a boy being brought to Los Angeles. He was not my son. If the boy is not Walter Collins, then where the hell is he? The police will do anything in their power to discredit you. The mayor wants this to go away. Convey the prisoner to the psychopathic board. I have never seen anyone fight as hard as you have. It would be my honor to defend your honor. I just want my son home. Change language to R. In select theaters October 24th. Taxi! Come on! Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles with two different gels for softness and support are outrageously comfortable. I'd rather walk anyway. Are you gelling? Dr. Scholl's. <laughs> I can't believe I'm beating Billie Jean King. You're not beating me. In fact, you haven't even got a serve in. Okay. You might want to take a gander at the uh, scoreboard. Mm. Whoa. What's with the Geico sign, Billy Jean? They're sponsoring all this. I get it. I quit, but I get it. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's hilarious. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Healthy beauty is the journey. And the first step is healthy skin. Create healthy skin for life with Aveeno Daily Lotion. This exclusive oat formula is proven to actually improve skin's health in one day with significant improvement in two weeks. Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion. 
Wednesday. I have to decide which one of you brats gets to inherit the kingdom. TV's most extravagantly guilty pleasure keeps getting sexier and dirtier. We both know who killed our dad. ABC's Dirty Sexy Money. All new episode Wednesday, 10, 9 central on ABC. Television's next great cop show, Life on Mars, premieres Thursday on ABC. Who is Barack Obama? He says our troops in Afghanistan are... Just air raiding villages and killing civilians. How dishonorable. Congressional liberals voted repeatedly to cut off funding to our active troops, increasing the risk on their lives. How dangerous. Obama and congressional liberals, too risky for America. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. So we're on the campus of Belmont University here in Nashville. Which candidate scored better in this second of three debates? Our chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos, here with the Nightline Report card. George, first, strategy, what's the grade? Uh, for Barack Obama, Barack Obama gets an A there. John McCain gets a B plus, and, and here's what happened uh, in strategy. I thought John McCain started out very strong. He had that proposal to buy up all the bad mortgages. He clearly was going to press on the attack uh, on, on Barack Obama, on taxes and several other issues, his ties to Fannie Mae. But here's what Obama did tonight. He answered the tax charge again. He said 95% of Americans are going to get a tax cut. One of his strongest domestic moments was on health care. Clear distinction between the candidates. He says it's a right. John McCain says it's a responsibility. But where I really think Barack Obama won the debate tonight in strategy is on foreign policy. He took the, foreign policy. He took the debate to John McCain, took it to John McCain's judgment, jujitsu the line that John McCain used in the last debate about how Barack Obama doesn't understand foreign policy. It's true. There are some things I don't understand. I don't understand how we ended up invading a country that had nothing to do with 9-11, while Osama bin Laden and al-Qaeda are setting up base camps and safe havens to train terrorists to attack us. And then he drove it home, Terry. They talked about Pakistan three times. In the debate tonight, Barack Obama is the candidate up there saying, I'm going to go after Osama bin Laden, no matter what the Pakistanis say. John McCain sort of letting that happen up there. So Barack Obama, the edge on strategy, style, the body language. What's the green? On style, Obama A minus, McCain A minus. I thought they both used the stage and used this format very well. They both roamed the stage very well. They were both very well aware of the camera angles at, at all times. Uh, you were exactly right. You pointed it out in your piece. I thought McCain had his absolute best moment when he walked up to that chief petty officer, put, him, put his arm on his shoulder and said, I thank you for your service. Uh, but, and, and, and this is, we should talk about this, you might downgrade McCain just a bit for a moment uh, that came about halfway through the debate where he seemed to show again some disdain for Barack Obama. Where he essentially was talking about the energy bill that uh, McCain voted against, Obama voted for. I'm not sure if we have this clip. Essentially what, what John McCain did in that moment was say, you'll be surprised to find out who voted against it. And he kind of pointed it over to Obama and says, that one. Now, that didn't really strike me, me neither. in the moment, Big yet. Deal. The, the Obama people are pushing it pretty hard. They're saying it showed the disdain again. What surprises me even more in the spin room tonight, the Republican National Committee is, is acting as if they're going to use this as a slogan. They're going to keep saying that one about Barack Obama. I think that's a huge mistake. I'm missing the point of that. I, I'm not altogether. sure I get it either. I'm not even yeah. sure it's that, it's that demeaning. All right, finally, we got the accuracy issue. Uh, on this one, Obama gets an A minus and McCain gets a B plus. They were both within the range uh, that you would expect uh, for political talk. The reason I think uh, McCain does a little bit worse on this, uh, uh, two attacks he makes on taxes, which just every fact check organization has said are just wrong. When he says uh, Barack Obama raised taxes 94 times, it's, it's simply not true. He's jumbling together a whole bunch of different uh, votes, which included votes against uh, tax cuts. And he uh, did mention that part of it tonight. Uh, that part of it. And then secondly, he says that 50 percent of small businesses uh, will get a tax increase under Barack Obama again. That's just not true. The best we can see is maybe 15 percent. All right. Bottom line here. Who won the second presidential debate? Uh, Obama's two for two. Two for two. Uh, he, you had him winning the first one. He, he definitely won uh, tonight. I think, again, he, he showed over the course of this debate, over the course of the two debates, he is answering the number one question Americans have about him. 
does he have the experience it takes to serve effectively as president? Over the course now of three hours uh, of debates, he is answering that question minute by minute. Do you think that, that Obama has, as I pointed out in the, in the piece, a kind of cooler demeanor up there, a little more distant, professorial? You no, know, but here's, and here's how it's working for him. We've been in the midst of the greatest financial crisis since the Great Depression over the last three weeks. One of the things you've seen because of that steady demeanor, the number of Americans, according to our ABC polling, who see Barack Obama as the safe choice, the safe choice in this election, are 55% Obama, 51% McCain. Obama is passing McCain on that score in part because of his steady, calm demeanor. Big surprise there in those numbers. George Stephanopoulos with the Nightline Report Card awarding debate number two to Barack Obama. And you can offer your own grades on tonight's debate. Click on the Nightline page at abcnews.com and let us know what you think. And when we come back, our experts are live to break down tonight's highs and lows. Where does this debate leave the race now? The new 375 horsepower Hyundai Genesis has a more effective braking performance than the BMW 550i. So you can avoid the obstacles you expect. It also has an extraordinary system of safety features. So you can deal with the ones you don't. Find out more at HyundaiGenesis.com. Wow, what results. And what savings. Olay Regenerist Micro Sculpting Cream. Under $30, yet Good Housekeeping says it hydrates better than the $300 department store cream. Spend less, get more. Regenerist. When you see what we've done with veggies, you'll think it's uncanny. Introducing V8 Soups from Campbell's. A full serving of vegetables in a soup so velvety and delicious, you won't be able to contain yourself. New Campbell's V8 Soups. Mr. President, what would you say your greatest mistakes have been? Oh. Uh, wish you would have given me this written question ahead of time. W. Rated PG-13. In theaters October 17th. Constipation, bloating, gas, diarrhea. People, is your colon sending you a message? Now there's New Philips Colon Health with probiotics. It helps naturally restore the balance in your digestive system. So you can avoid those very unpleasant symptoms with New Philips Colon Health. Thursday. What's that? An unimaginable crisis. You'll have to see to believe. All new Grey's Anatomy, Thursday, 9, 8 central, followed by the series premiere of Life on Mars on ABC. At U.S. Cellular, we believe you shouldn't pay for the calls. Hi. You can't wait to get. Met Tom Perriello yet? A New York lawyer who's moved back to Virginia to run for Congress. But his liberal policies are still from New York. Perriello opposes the offshore and Alaskan drilling we need to lower gas prices. Opposes the Marriage Protection Amendment, which protects traditional marriage. And Perriello supports the so-called comprehensive immigration reform. We know what that means. Amnesty and open borders for illegal immigrants. Tom Perriello, wrong for Virginia. I'm Virgil Coote, and I approve this saying. This is the all-new Honda Pilot crossover. What sets it apart is Honda's innovative variable cylinder management system. Simply put, the six-cylinder engine is programmed to run seamlessly on as few as three cylinders, offering you greater fuel efficiency. What else would you expect from Honda, the greenest automaker in America? The all-new eight-passenger Pilot. Get APR financing as low as 0.9% on all-new 2009 Honda Pilots for well-qualified customers. Tomorrow, Barack Obama, Charlie Gibson, exclusive, his first interview after tonight's debate. What will he have to say? The answers only on ABC's World News tomorrow. Then Thursday, it's John McCain's turn to jump on the historic World News Battleground Tour. Nightline continues from Nashville, Tennessee with Terry Moran. 
So there are now just 27 days to November 4th, Election Day. Time's running out for these two candidates to win over American voters. Did they accomplish what they had to do tonight? And where did they fall short? We welcome back ABC News consultants Donna Brazil and Matt Dowd for their take on tonight's showdown. And Matt, let me begin with you. Everybody says, and you can see it in the polls, essentially, momentum shifting over to the Obama campaign, John McCain needing some kind of game changer. Did he get it? No, you know, it's as you say, Terry, all the momentum in this race in the last two weeks has been all in Barack Obama's favor. He's got a significant lead. John McCain needed to change the nature of that momentum and change it in a significant way. He didn't. And in fact, I think Barack Obama won tonight, not significantly, but won tonight. And if you take a look at the last two weeks, Pal Sarah Palin has gone from a positive to, no to less than positive. Uh, she lost the vice presidential debate. Barack Obama won the first presidential debate. All the significant things have happened have all been in Barack Obama's favor. And we're one day down, more, more and more less day for John McCain to try to make up ground. And it's a political climate that obviously is very, very difficult for Republicans. And Donna, let me ask you, Barack Obama building his, his momentum, it seems, what's he doing right out there? He's connecting to the middle class. He's answering their questions and he's easing their fears about the market. He's telling them what the country yeah, must do in them. order to uh, get everything right, get our economy them. back in now shape, uh, to invest in critical so health care, energy having, concerns that the American people also everybody. are concerned about. But more importantly, uh, Terry, he's connecting uh, on things that matter. They want a leader. They don't want another partisan uh, running the White House. And I think John McCain often comes across as the guy who says, I have the record of working in a bipartisan manner, but he doesn't have the time or the temperament to look at his opponent sitting there on the stage with him and say, Senator Obama uh, by name. And then tonight he said that one as if he forgot his colleague's name. So I think the American people want steady leadership. They want reassurance. And Senator Obama gave them both tonight. Well, that, whole, that one thing, apparently, the Republicans want to make uh, that their slogan for Barack Obama. But partisanship, Matt, let me go to you. You mentioned Sarah Palin. She's been out there bringing up Barack Obama's ties to a 1960s radical and essentially saying uh, that Barack Obama doesn't understand America like uh, the rest of us do, that he, he doesn't perhaps love America, essentially, uh, like the rest of us do. Uh, that's a very tough message. It's one you'd almost expect very late in the campaign. Here we are 27 days out. It almost sounds like they're running out of ammunition. Well, it's interesting to me. If you didn't take a look at any polls in this race and didn't focus on any of the results in battleground states and just looked at what the rhetoric was from Sarah Palin and John McCain, you would say that's a campaign that's losing and not going and not having a lot of places to go to win this race. I think that's going to totally fall on deaf ears. I think people are going to ultimately react negatively against it. They're in an economic crisis we are. People are worried about their jobs. They're worried about their houses. They're worried about their health care. And she's bringing up something from 40 years ago and trying to make it somehow an indictment of Barack Obama. I think the average person out there is like, listen, why are we talking about this stuff? And I think it's actually a mistake. I think they're going to, by doing that, they're going to take this race from a race where Barack Obama has a solid but small lead to a race that begins to expand in Barack Obama's favor because they're not talking to where the American public is. It's unfortunate, so Sarah Palin. Uh, of course it will backfire because the American people are not interested in, you know, demonizing these candidates. They know that Barack Obama is, is, is someone who can lead this country at a time of crisis. But I think there's something else at play here. So, uh, Governor Palin it, it is trying to stoke up uh, fears. And she's trying to say something that Perhaps she should just come out and say it, but unfortunately, she's skirting around the, you know, uh, skirting around the table. She wants to call him un-American, unpatriotic. She wants to say something blatantly false, and I don't know why are, are you, they have given her this assignment to go out and attack Barack Obama in this way. This is just unfortunate, and I'm sorry to see, uh, uh, you know, this governor go to this governor Sarah Palin go to uh, the bottom of the barrel to throw this kind of mud. Well, it, it promises to get tougher uh, as we go along. As I say, 27 days out, and they're at this level of, of very personal and cutting attacks. Looks like it'll get, it'll get worse. Donna Brazil and Matt Dowd, thanks very much. We'll see you at the next debate, of course. And when we come back, we'll cut through some of this post-debate spin around here. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Touch of Grey. generation that 
swore it would never get old, didn't. Welcome to the summer of life. And now there's an official hair treatment of the summer of your life. New Touch of Gray from Just For Men. Let you keep a little gray. Works gradually. Just comb in, rinse. <laughs> never trust anybody over 90. Keep a little gray with New Touch of Gray. In order for things to work, it doesn't mean it has to have an uncomfortable feeling. Crest Pro Health kills 99% of germs that can cause gingivitis, plaque, and bad breath without the burn of alcohol. It really feels like it's working without the burning. <laughs> Crest Pro Health Rinse. For the worst allergies, I want a product with the best decongestion. My choice is clear. Claritin D. Nothing works stronger, faster, or longer to relieve your worst allergy symptoms, including congestion, without drowsiness. Get Claritin D at the pharmacy counter. Sniff Claritin Clear. In two days, Harvey Keitel, Lisa Bonet, Michael Imperioli, Gretchen Maul, and Jason O'Mara. Do we have a warrant? Here's your warrant. ABC's Life on Mars premieres Thursday, 10, 9 central after a new Grey's Anatomy on ABC. On health care reform, two extremes. On one end, government-run health care, higher taxes. On the other, insurance companies without rules denying coverage. Barack Obama says both extremes are wrong. His plan? Keep your employer paid coverage. Keep your own doctor. Take on insurance companies to bring down costs. Cover pre-existing conditions and preventive care. Common sense for the change we need. I'm Barack Obama and I approve this message. For many men, an interview suit is a first step toward a second chance. Donate your gently used professional clothing during the Men's Warehouse National Suit Drive and receive a 10% discount toward your next purchase. I guarantee it. Hey, I thought you were bringing McDonald's. I forgot. Get two Egg McMuffin sandwiches for $2 at McDonald's. Make your morning a little brighter and maybe someone else's too. Two Egg McMuffins for two bucks. What? By popular demand, the Repo Show Sale is back only at Birdland in Salem, Lynchburg, Roanoke, and Bedford. This Friday and Saturday, here's your chance to buy vehicles bought from auctions that were repossessed by banks or were leases that were terminated. You pay $27 down and make the payments posted right on the windshield. Some are just $89 a month. $27 down. $89 a month. Shop for your family sedan, sports cars, trucks, SUVs, even luxury vehicles. Search for your vehicle at RepoShow.com. Then rush to one of these four Birdland locations. Hurry, sale, and Saturday. Gleaning for the World has been working around the clock to prepare and send aid to U.S. hurricane victims, and the work is far from over. Thousands in the Gulf are still without electricity and may be for weeks. You can help with a donation of money or supplies, such as bottled water, baby care products like diapers and baby wipes, and paper products such as paper towels and tissues. For a complete list of items needed or to learn how to donate money, visit WSET.com, keyword lifeline. For many men, an interview suit is a first step toward a second chance. Donate your gently used professional clothing during the Men's Warehouse National Suit Drive and receive a 10% discount toward your next purchase. I guarantee it. Forecast backed by the AMS seal from the ABC 13 weather experts. So our Jake Tapper has been following every turn in this presidential race, actually, I think one of the leading reporters on this race. And let me ask you about the Republican attacks outside this room. It's pretty civil in here. Yeah. They've just unloaded on Barack Obama uh, in the past couple of days, past week or so. What do you make of it? Well, it's interesting. If you, if you pay attention, as, as I do, as you do, to what the messages are coming from the Republican Party. You have John McCain saying yesterday, Barack Obama, who is the real Barack Obama? Which, coincidentally or not, is the same as the subject line on that email out there that has all those insinuations about Obama. Sarah Palin, Governor Palin out there saying, he doesn't see America the way we do, and he pals around with terrorists. And then you have the Republican National Committee saying, hey, we think he's getting a lot of money from maybe from illegal foreign sources. So you add those four messages up. Now, Republicans always paint Democrats as exotic and other, whether it's Mike Dukakis or John, Der John Kerry. But you add up those four messages, and you get, you're walking very, very directly towards a place where you're saying Barack Obama is foreign and a threat 
and it comes very close to something unseemly. And they're not saying it. Pals around with terrorists, like he's a danger almost, is the a dangerous well, person to vote for. We know that there is this fear out there among some Americans that Barack Obama is some sort of Muslim Manchurian candidate. Right, right. right. And uh, is that going to work? It sows seeds of doubt. And in states like Ohio and Pennsylvania, where there are white working class people who are going to vote for Obama right now because of the economy, but maybe they won't in four weeks. Who knows? Ten seconds. Now they're going to call him that one. Why? I don't know. That seems very strange to me. It seems a lot like when Ross Perot called African Americans you people or you folks. Oh, all right. Well, maybe. Jake Tapper, you'll be on the trail, of course, as he has been all campaign. Thanks very much for that. Let's take a quick look ahead now to a special edition of Nightline. Good Morning America co-anchor Robin Roberts' battle to overcome breast cancer inspired millions of people. Tomorrow night, we'll bring an intimate behind-the-scenes look at the challenges she faced while continuing to do her job and receive treatment. Robin Roberts, our colleague and our friend, in her own words. They said the tumor was nasty, and I'm told it's at a point where you're going to need chemotherapy and then radiation. And that was the first and only time that I said I may die. A woman of real courage and real class, our colleague Robin Roberts, that's tomorrow night on Nightline. But that's our report for tonight as they tear down the debate hall behind us. I'm Terry Moran. For Cynthia McFadden and Martin Bashir and all of us at ABC News, good night, America.